has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Go queen. You got it, girl. She's a queen. You better represent. Go queen. Go queen. Go. She's a queen about her business. Queen. Working hard on a mission. another the key chat podcast today i have the chat room and i have the queens on the throne i have two former guests and i'm going to start with miss china the writer and i have miss cynthia d hilaire there's some they have some great opinions and today we're just going to have a chat room discussion about some things pertinent to the queen and today's topic is going to be related to just if black women are under different pressures different standards regarding our appearance things like that. I know the whole bonnet controversy was pretty big, but we're going to take it and spin it a little further and just talk about do we have unfair practices or unfair rules on how we should present ourselves. So we're going to have a great conversation with some great opinions. So ladies, I know, of course, the hot topic was the whole bonnet controversy. So let's start first with going around on what's your take on I know me and China talked about it a bit online. So, <laughs> <We did. laughs> I already know China's opinion. I'm going to start with Cynthia. And just what was your take on it initially, though, just about the whole bonnet controversy? Um, you know, I, I it's natural to get defensive. Like, why are people policing our bodies and how we do? Um, would it have been considered ghetto or would it have been policed if it was the white culture doing this, right? And, you know, as soon as Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian or, you know, those people start adopting bonnets in public and making it high fashion and stylish or even the runways that they start adding it to their shows, um, all of a sudden it's on trend, it's in style, right? We've seen that done so many times. Um, so yeah, of course I've got naturally, I naturally was offended to that and I saw that point of view, right? Mm -hmm. um, personally, I mean, I've worn bonnets on the plane. Like, I'm about to go sleep on the plane. I take red eyes all the time. When I hop on the plane and I'm in my chair, my bonnet goes on so I can fall asleep because I do have to protect my natural hair. Like, I don't, as a Black woman, get to operate, like, the beauty standards that are out there, right, for, for people of who are not of color. Um, but then on the flip side, right, because I always play devil's advocate with myself, um, perception is a big thing, right, which is like why I wanted to hop on this conversation with you. So thank you for reaching out. But perception is a big thing. Um, and, you know, how you're perceived um, by others says like it it correlates to how you're treated, you know, mm -hmm. and we have to consider that we do. Yeah. We have to consider that. And right now unfortunately this world is not made for black women so wearing your bonnet in public freely as you wish is just not going to benefit you in the society that you're in now if we were in a different society where this world was made for us i would be so here for it all the time anytime you want but yeah you just kind of have to live with that duality you know so yeah, I think that was the whole thing, like being pulled in two different directions, which I'll give my take after China. So what was your take on it? Well, I took it from a, a, a slightly different angle. When I listened to Monique, I was 100% behind her because I am a high school teacher. And I have said this on every post where someone had something negative to say, and no one to date has been able to refute what I said. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, we had a situation. I was teaching at a predominantly white school. And let's just say out of maybe 5,000 students, we may have had 100 black students. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, this is in a, a pretty well-to-do area. And these students, the black students, were coming to school in pajama pants, house shoes, hair bonnets, and... I remember one particular conversation. I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I, I kept my mouth shut. There was a young lady sitting in my class. I teach English. Um, everybody was engaged, but I could not 
teach because I was staring at her in the front row, half paying attention, but looking like she wasn't at school. She was still half in the bed as far as how she was dressed. So I, I pulled her to the side and I said, okay, so explain to me this outfit. Like, what's, what's going on? I just didn't feel like it this morning. That was what her response was. I said, you felt like just rolling out of bed? I said, did you brush your teeth? And she said, yeah, I did that, but um, Ms. Myers, my, I just didn't, I mean, I'm just not feeling it today. So we, at that time, this particular school, we got a black principal and she tried it and the parents pushed back. What I didn't understand was, I'm like, this, we're in an academic environment. At what point do we say, this is where it's acceptable and this is where it's not acceptable? So that's why when I heard that, I'm like, y'all, I, I get what y'all trying to say, but look who's watching us. We're grown, we grown, grown. So these young ladies are coming up 14, 15, 16 years old and they think it's acceptable to sit in a, in a classroom where they're supposed to be educated so that they can go on and, and, and make something of themselves, whether they go to college, technical school or become entrepreneurs, they did not look like they were ready to learn. Let me flip that over right quick and then I'm gonna stop. If Someone says to me, well, that shouldn't hinder you being able to teach them. I said, but I bet you if I walked into the classroom in my head bonnet and my pajama pants and my house shoes, it's going to be a problem. It's going to distract them from getting what I need to give them. So it's twofold. So that's why I had a fit about it, because if they're watching us, then they're starting younger and younger to walk out in public unacceptable. And how do we how can we tell them to go to work? and put on decent clothes? How can we tell them to go to a job interview without the pajama pants with the cupcakes all over them? I mean, it, it's got to stop somewhere and we are the grown folk. So if grown folks say it's okay, then pretty soon we're gonna have uh, 10 year olds, 11 and 12, 14 year olds walking through the halls of our academic institutions looking like they're about to go to sleep. It's a problem. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's why I had a fit about it because I'm dealing with it as a teacher and it's not acceptable where for school. It's just not. So the funny thing is, I'm like, I get both arguments because initially, um, as far as the bonnet thing, and mind you, you know, I got a few years on probably Cynthia, you know, I'm born in the 70s. Um, I grew up where my mom, number one, her famous saying was, a woman's hair is her crown and glory. And she did not believe in, like, back in my time, the big thing was going out with the pink sponge rollers and your hair tied up in a scarf. And I know my mother, every time we would go out to the grocery store or something, if, if, if a woman was like that, I could see her cringing and she'd make a little side comment. Like, that's just something we didn't do. So, and like, I have a, like I was telling you, I think on one of the posts, I ironically have a son who's 20 and yeah. I do not <laughs> walk out this door with do a do right. <laughs> But to me, I'm like, that's, I, I don't like it. But then my kids, like I was telling you how the millennials, they were just like, well, they were looking at me like I was crazy saying I was making a big deal over nothing and that's just what people <laughs> do and I was like I don't like it so like I get both ends of it because we are held to a different standard and that's just the way it is you know representation does matter I feel like black women are at the bottom in a lot of just the ways we're treated ways we're paid just it's ridiculous it but is. then we're emulated the most so on the side if we go out wearing a bonnet just for a practical reason, like just the other day, like you saw, I had my hair braided up and I had to go outside and I was like, oh man, it's starting to rain outside. <laughs> I was like, I gotta hurt because I, like, I don't really want to do the scarf thing, especially where I was going. I can't rock this to a way where it looks like I'm just trying to be practical. So I was like, I personally got to go outside with my hair that way. But let's just say, for example, like you mentioned for the plane and I saw that people write that too that they weren't going to an airport and sitting in a nasty Durnfield plane without their hair covered in a bonnet. So right. in that sense, that's a person thinking about it in a practical way. But I feel like other people may look at us and judge us. And that's where I was kind of like starting to think about it. Like, well, why do I have to think twice of what white people are going to think or what society is going to think if I choose to walk outside with it? Whether it's unattractive or not, like you mentioned, let's say Kim Kardashian or let's because let's take it to a little level remember when China remember back in the day braids were like kind of questionable and then remember mm -hmm. both Derek Ward in the movie 10 and people were kind of mm -hmm. oh wait a minute you know it's cool it was a <laughs> where 
they couldn't even wear braids to certain situations because they would look mm-hmm. unprofessional or people would look sideways, even in our own community, you know? So I just have so many different feelings about it. I personally, like I said, I don't want my son walking outside with a D-Rag going, my daughter, I would definitely watch how you look when you walk out the door. Right. But kind of like... I don't know. Like in school, I definitely think that's inappropriate. And I do think young people should have a, a more re- a reverence for their parents, like Monique was saying, you know, like the auntie, come um, pull you aside, you know, <laughs> and, and check you a little bit. I get where she's coming from too. But then I'm just like, damn, can we do anything without having somebody telling us it's wrong. It's like, I have mixed feelings about the whole thing. You know, like, I'm like, do I have the right to judge somebody else for doing it? Am I being overly critical? Because we already have all these extra standards. So I'm like, maybe I shouldn't look at it that way. It's like, I just, I never thought about it deeper until I started reading other comments. And I'm like, maybe we are wrong for having this conversation. Cause I've gone to Walmart and seen white women dressed inappropriately but there's no discussion on like, hey, she shouldn't be out wearing her little thongs, all the stuff like that. So that's when I started to think, you know, on a different level, like maybe it's another situation where Black women are like put on the grill again, you know? Yeah, I mean, when you mentioned the white women, right, at Walmart and you see them inappropriately, no one ever takes a picture of them yeah. and put them on the world stage, right? But they'll do that to Black women. They'll expose Black women and identify them and then make them like this big example. So, not nice. Not nice at all. Yeah, so I that's think... Back and forth. But what is it? No, I was saying that's why I go oh. back and forth with it, especially with our appearance in particular, because, mm-hmm. you know, we already deal with it with hair alone. You know, there's situations mm-hmm. where our natural hair isn't accepted. So I'm like, we can't. Sometimes I feel we can't win, you know. I honestly think in a lot of situations, and this definitely may not be the popular opinion, but I think we're deflecting. And the reason I say that is because it's easy to say, oh, the white women are, you know, no one would say anything to them or no one would say anything to the Asian women. But the lady that put this out there, the one that started this was a black woman talking to black women. Now, mind you, I do wish in every situation because there is a post um, that was put out by I think Earthquake, the comedian yesterday, uh, where a man was talking about all these things are wrong, you know, with black women. And you guys, if you get a chance to Earthquake, the comedian, there's a long post where black people are just going at it, the black men Mm -hmm. and the black women. And someone said in particular, they said, why can't we have a forum where nobody can get in there but us? That was that's my only thing with what Monique did, but we don't have a place where we can address every black woman and lock out everybody of every other, you know, ethnicity. So do we just be quiet? And because someone said in one of the comments, well, why do we always have to air our dirty laundry? Or um, why do I don't like having this conversation in front of company? So when do we just continue to be quiet and and Say, okay, because we can't kick out all the white people or the Asian people out of this conversation. We're just going to ignore that it's going on. But Monique put it out. She was talking to us. She does, she's not concerned. And this is how I took it. This is my you know, opinion. She's not concerned about what the white people are doing. She's mm-hmm. looking at the fact that this is what's going on. Now, mind you, about three weeks ago, I was in Cancun, Mexico. And when we got off the plane, I saw at least nine black women with bonnets on. And my friend, who was with me, she said, you see that? I said, yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm like, we all over in another country. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Looking crazy as hell. And that's what we said to each other. Well, she's more, she's the silent one. She said, Mm -hmm. and she's a flight attendant. She works for Southwest. She said, I see this all the time. And guess what? It's the majority of us. She's been a flight attendant five years. And she says that in the majority, especially because Monique said she saw it at the Hartsfield Jackson in Atlanta. My friend flies out of Atlanta. She said, that's that's the norm. It's it's mm-hmm. and it's us. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes we're afraid or we're just, you know, we don't want to address the fact that it's our sister. It ain't, it ain't Becky. I don't give a darn. Becky, Becky can walk out butt naked with her flat butt, and I'm not, I'm not gonna care. But mm-hmm. if it's my sister, which is what Monique was saying, I'm gonna touch her on the shoulder and say, hey, are you going through something? That's the first thing. And Monique even said that. 
because people, I went through that and I didn't, I barely got up out the bed and combed my hair and did anything. That was a problem with me. So it was bigger than that. So if that's the case, then yes, if you see something like that, it's okay to say, are you okay? But, you know, address that versus judging. But I'm gonna go back to Cancun. In Cancun, I was looking at the fact that they on vacation, they got margaritas. You know, they, so, they still, so they could have done better than that. That, that's how I'm looking at it. If you on vacation and you enjoying it, ain't, it ain't your financial situation in this particular, you know, situation. That's just how you want to look. And as a black woman, I'm, I, I just, I wasn't embarrassed because other people, I was embarrassed for me and my culture. I don't care what white people think. And that's why I was behind Monique 100% because I'm like, this ain't got nothing to do with anybody else. This is us. We just can't kick everybody out of this conversation, but it needed to be held. And guess what? Since that happened, they done talked about the pajama pants, the do-rags, everything's been put out in the last two weeks. And I appreciate that because it needed to be said. It just needed to be said. Yeah, that is another way of looking at it. What's your take on that, Cynthia? <laughs> um, I, okay, well... It's, I see like generational clashes, right? Um, I I just want to say, I think there's a time and place for everything. And I, I clearly, I think appearance is very important, right? Um, but I do see a generational clash here. Um, and the thing about like, you know, the younger generation, Gen Z, the younger mon millennials, they're trying to build a world for themselves, right? Mm. And in that world, it is okay for them to step out in their bonnets. And- when I was hearing your, your conversation, China, like the first thing that popped up in my head was like, well, what do bonnets equate to, right? Like, do you think they mean it's ghetto? Do you think you mean it's like poor? Like, what is it equating to in your mind? That's just the, 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 right. the thought right. that was coming to me. Um, and then I, I, I absolutely do not agree. <laughs> like, unfortunately, we are not the, um, we, we're like, we're not the first class here, right? It's, it's the white culture that's the first class. So no matter what no one's, what anybody says, at the end of the day, you are always looking at yourself through the lens of like white people in their, in their, in their viewpoint on you. Um, so that some of the decisions and the way we address each other and like the reasons why we scold each other comes from that place, right? Um, if I'm embarrassed for myself because I see like some of my sisters wearing bonnets, I'm embarrassed because I know that um, this is going to not, it's not just reflecting on them, it's reflecting on all of me. So like if my white boss was to see that, then he's going to look at me and be like, oh Lord, I hope she don't come up in here in a bonnet one day. Um, <laughs> like that, that's, those were the, that's, that's my opinion, uh, uh, like on that conversation and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just. Personally, I've been in work situations, right? Um, I know we're supposed to be talking about appearance, but it looks like we just talked about bonnets. No, I've been in work situations. <laughs> no, um, where I didn't wear a bonnet, but I wore um like a head wrap, right? One of the head wraps that have the little knots up front, some earrings, oh, yeah. you know, really tasteful makeup. And my white boss was commenting on it constantly, right? Like he's like, oh what is that okay <laughs> like real because he was uncomfortable with it right I mean I still wore it because you know I live in California and if you're gonna say something then you're gonna get reprimanded for saying something um but it's just like why is that such a problem for them like I it's a thing for me to wrap my hair just because you don't see your people doing it all the time doesn't mean it's not classy or it doesn't exist so yeah, that's, that's. I'm glad you brought up the example of the head wrap because it's kind of like now we kind of picking and choosing in a sense because we look at the head wrap as more acceptable, but there's a group of people that's going to even frown when you walk on the head wrap and they're not going to think that's professional either. They're going to think that's also ghetto. So I think mm -hmm. the conversation could dive into like, what defines ghetto? What defines yeah, that's the question. Who's defining ghetto? Are we defining it? You hit the it nail looks like we're defining it. Not you hit the nail on the head. You brought up you like you just said who that's the thing. Who who is defining it and why also? The who part is super vital because 
who is defining it and where are we getting that definition? Are we getting it because of how we feel? Or are we getting it because we're looking at the standard of how we should appear? And that's why I just started to have mixed feelings when the, the conversation started about it, because then I'm just like, damn, because some of the comments were so judgmental and it was like mm -hmm. looking at a person's class based on once again, what's on top. And it's, to me, it's beyond a bonnet. I can walk out the door right now my hair like this and I'm gonna have, I live in a, a, a white town. I'm gonna have people staring at me pink in some type of way because my hair is pinky. I could also record the next episode wearing one of my silky ass wigs, which I, which I attend, actually, it's, I actually don't <laughs> plan to do it anymore that much because I'm like, you know what? Now mind y'all wear a wig because I'm lazy. But then I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you. Not with a wig. You know, but, but that's a, I'm gonna ask you wrong with a wig. You know, but, but that's another thing. There's some people that hate wigs. They can't stand black women wearing wigs. And it's not just it really is a lot of us. There's men and women they can't stand that. They think it's oh, you're trying to be something you're not. It's fake. Why are you doing that? That is a whole, that's that's probably like a whole different episode. There's the people that cannot <laughs> artificial hair. So back yeah. to just you brought up a perfect example with wearing a head wrap, and you brought up an excellent point. Just saying, who is defining it? I just feel like it kind of all goes back to like whatever we put on our head. Somebody gonna say something. Like I grew up in the '90s. Like I was like you know in my early 20s, where it's like or even the '80s if you wore particular hairstyles, but a lot of spritz in it that was super hard that was considered ghetto too i just feel like we have so many standards on what we put on our head whether it's a head wrap or it's our hair a wig a scarf or rollers it's like there's just this big fascination with what black women put on their heads i think at the end of the day you know um this kind of veers off topic um but when you brought that up it I remember reading this article about kind of like after Reconstruction era, right? So when slavery was kind of like um, uh, closed out and things, um, the white wives used to be so jealous of how beautiful the Africans used to um, to style their hair, right? Because they came from Africa doing like these really elaborate braids and, you know, it would define gravity as it always does. And then so they passed laws forcing them to cover their hair, their head, and they covered their heads with head wraps, right? But even mm -hmm. that became a problem because, you know, we have all the sauce and we made the head wraps do all the extraness. So no one, I mean, we the only between <laughs> back then and now is back then they didn't have all these platforms where we could talk about it and, and like say our cases, but it's the same conversation over and over and it reinvents itself over and over like people are just constantly policing especially the black woman that's just policing her looks and her her life in society you know i wanted to say this when uh as i was reading a different post what struck me a lot was this most of the posts of the people that were defending the bonnet situation this is how they started it they said, well, I don't personally do that. I, I don't personally go to Walmart dressed like that. Or I don't personally. So, so the question is, I would rather hear from the people that do. Because if all of these people are defending this other group of people or whoever is doing it, because I'm going to say it, I'm going to be real cliche right now. I don't personally wear my bonnets at the house. But if you guys look back at the con comments, most of the people that were speaking the loudest were the ones that said that they didn't do it. So if they don't do it, the people that are, why aren't they speaking up? Because I, I did, I saw a lot of it. I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do it. But I don't do. I want to know, kind of like the. the what's the thought process of the women that do? Because see, a lot of us are doing a lot of talking, but we ain't doing it. So why don't we do it then? Why, why don't you go out the house and go to Walmart with your bonnet on? Why don't you go to the gas station or to the local grocery store? Why aren't we doing it? So we're defending people that won't even talk for themselves because I promise you, go back and look at those comments. The majority said, I don't personally do it. So that led me, when I started reading that, I just stepped out of the conversation because I'm like, I'm defending people that ain't saying a word. I need them to say, I do it. I go to the gas station like that. I go to Walmart like that and it's okay for me, but I didn't see that. I want 
I mean, if you do, it's fine. Say it. Yeah. I want to answer that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this is slightly embarrassing, but I'm going to tell you why I don't do it. Because when I was younger, I did used to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I did too. I wore scarves at the house all the yeah. time. I did. I, mean, I still, I still wear a scarf <laughs> at the house, um, but I probably, and I, and I, I stand by this when I'm on the plane in my seat, my bonnet does come on. I stand by this, like I'm in my plane. Um, but to be honest, right. You won't see me go to Target or Whole Foods with the bonnet on because um, of assimilation. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where I, where I live, what I'm, um, the career I'm trying to pursue, like people that I can meet off the whim. Like I need to be presentable all the time, right? And I kind of need to assimilate, right, into the society. I kind of need to. I am so embarrassed that I'm saying this, but white people oh, need to fine. be able to like, white people need to be able to work with you. Do you know what I'm saying? They need to be able to have a general liking to you, a, a trust to you. And other yeah. people need to be able to do that as well. Um, and people in different classes need to be able to do that. Um, and, you know, and I, 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 I remember I came in saying I don't do it and I appearance is very important to me. I am not knocking. There has been a social... Um, conditioning of um what you wear determines your class right so i'm not trying to knock that out i'm not trying to reinvent that will i understand that will is that that structure is there um but i am calling out that we did not design that structure we did not have a a a a written we didn't get to write that structure right Right. but what i'm recognizing that the women these days who do choose to wear the bonnets uh, maybe they just don't care about the simulation and kudos to them honey because we need more like that right we we want to right. live in a world like Absolutely. That. but maybe they're they're you know making that statement to kind of rewrite that 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 social conditioning of of what um of what clothing and and that represents about your class do you get what i'm saying oh yeah well, I, I totally i totally get what you're saying i, I do want to say this if they're doing it and their their point or their purpose is to rewrite it, that would be amazing. But are they in a movement that they don't know they're in, and or are you know that they're they're trying to make change, or are they spinning their wheels? Because going back to your point, and that actually takes me back to what I said as far as with the younger generation, with the younger people, the ones that are sitting in the classrooms, if they know that, hey, I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do in this classroom. I'm going to be valedictorian or salutatorian, and then I'm going to go to Harvard or Yale or wherever I want to go. And I can walk right into Microsoft with this head bonnet on my head, and nobody's going to say anything. See, you were saying that you know that you have to assimilate. So if we are showing these young people that they don't, is it going to help or hurt them in the long run? See, because I'm a teacher, I'm always thinking about the next generation and how they're prepared to be in this world. Are we helping or hurting them by saying that these things or appearance, not just bonnets, appearance overall, it's that it's that it's okay to do what you want to do. Because to be honest, I have friends that are in corporate America, executives and this, that, and the other, and they know that they cannot come out the house dressed a certain way. So these are six-figure women and black women, and they know they're like, man, if I walked up in that hospital in that administrative office with a head bonnet on my head, it's going to be a problem. I know it is. So overall, we know that our children, and I hate to say it, because even, uh, Sharonda, with, with you, when you talk about your son, I'm sure he knows what's you know acceptable and what's not. He can't walk into a job like that. So with the young people that are doing it and they're watching us, grown folk, all in Walmart, all in these places, they're gonna say, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. It's okay. Are they gonna have a problem getting a job? Are they gonna have a problem getting bank loans to start their companies? Are they gonna, are, are we putting them in a situation that's gonna be a lose lose for them because we won't tell them that they live in the world that's majority run by white folk and they gotta assimilate? Um, one last point, and then I'll stop. Master P, 
I, I follow the music industry um, <laughs> ever since I was little. He had a mouthful of platinum gold, whatever else. Uh, there was a show that came on years ago, G's to Gents. I'll never forget that because I've been All studying right. appearance and, and Black people in society for a long time. And he was teaching these young Black men that they have to assimilate. He said when he first went into the boardroom, he knew what he could and could not do. Sean Carter said the same thing. You know why he wears his hair like he wears it now? He wears it like that because he said, I can. I'm running the boardroom now. But when I walked into that boardroom initially, I couldn't. He had mm -hmm. to be accepted to get into a position so that he can do what the hell he wanted to do. You get what I'm saying? Are we teaching our children, hey, play the game, get in there and put your feet up on the table with your fuzzy little slippers on. And they can't nobody tell you because that's your table now. But can they get to the table? Can all of them get in these spaces and be accepted, you know, doing whatever they want to do? So I, that, that's the question for me because I'm training the next generation. What do I tell my kids? Do I say, okay, y'all, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Come on up in here with that bunny. And when you get to go get a job interview at your first little job at Macy's or whatever, put some put some rhinestones on your bunny and go on up in there. Like, what do I say to my children? Mm -hmm. That's that's my only question. What am I training them for? I yeah. love that you brought up, you know, uh the G's to gents thing, because it's very valid. Yeah, like they you have to assimilate and then once you get to the top you can wear your hair as you want <laughs> any Please. kind of way you want any kind of way <laughs> like, it's my show now what's up so That's we gotta a... get them there we gotta get them there like we want them right. to run companies <laughs> we want this that is a valid point i do want to go back to though just like we mentioned like assimilation you know, that's something we've touched on in this entire conversation is assimilation. So can we have the argument, is it true that we have to assimilate to white culture then and white standards to be successful or to be accepted? Is that pretty much the standard for- That's a question. That's a big yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it is true. Like we, and see, and that's why I was like, we, we, it's two sides of that coin. We already get prejudged, so don't give them extra. Then the other side of the coin is we already get prejudged, so to hell with what they think. You know, I just feel like it's two sides of the coin, and I do think there's probably some people who really say, I don't give a damn what these people are going to think when I walk out that door, and I'm definitely not going to knock that person that thinks that way. Absolutely. You know, then there's the other person that's like, well, hell, they're not going to mess up my tape or whatever. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that person either. That, that person that just be like, I don't want these type of issues. I don't want these type of problems. They already judging me. So I don't want to give them any extra ammo. I can't knock that person either, you know, but I definitely think we could have a, a long, long conversation in general. Uh, just, you know, we just take it back to black women. Cause that's another type. I love, do you suggest, I love that show, but even just back to black women, I think we still go back to just how we look from the neck up. It's just like, it's such a huge thing for us, whether we wear a bonnet, whether we wear a scarf, whether we wear a hair natural, whether we wear braids, is that acceptable? You know, whether we wear a weave or a wig, is that acceptable? Even if we lighten our hair, you know, yeah. I've been hair blonde before and I heard that argument too, a well, black woman shouldn't be wearing blonde hair. Oh, I saw that the other day on Shade Room. <laughs> you know, but yeah, but you know, that's been a long argument too. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah it is. Like the big old, your girl, she slayed that guy. What was his name? Jay, because he Jay. said, <laughs> hey, I I color, dark skin women shouldn't wear different color hair. It's just like, we go through so much from the neck up to be accepted. You know, no matter what we do, like, I just feel like that crown boy goes through a lot of bruises and bumps <laughs> you know and you know what and while we're while we're on g's to gents you guys remember the sister show monique's charm school yeah. Monique, actually this is this saying this about the bonnet and starting this monique didn't just come up with this 
she started that years and years ago when she had that television show and actually she pulled a lot of women off the flavor of love and all of those shows and she was just trying to teach them how to like I guess teach them etiquette or how to assimilate so to speak and it was interesting <laughs> that show I could watch it now I, I would laugh because she had her work cut out for her but it was when I think about both shows and any other show like it it's all about assimilation so here's the deal this is what I tell my daughter I say it all the time I say you don't have to assimilate into the society but Put yourself in a position where you don't need a damn thing from the majority of in society. Because if you don't need a bank loan and you don't need uh, their money or acceptance for anything, then mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But don't need the majority for a job. Don't need them for a bank loan. Don't need them. And then try to say, yeah, I know I'm asking you for $600,000 to fund this house or whatever I'm doing, but I refuse to put on panties. I mean, <laughs> you just, you, it, I, that's with anything. If somebody asks you for something, you kind of at their mercy. So the, the thing <laughs> is, don't need somebody for something unless you you willing to go through the steps for their approval that's just the mm -hmm. real world don't ask me for nothing because if you do then I kind of control some things because I can mm -hmm. either give it to you or not that's 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 why a lot of black owned businesses and you know black banks and this that and that's why we need more of that in our community so that we don't need the majority to tell us how to walk how to talk and how to do things and we need to support them because if we never do that then guess what we're going to be assimilating to the day we die because we need mm -hmm. from the majority mm -hmm. it's just it's just real mm -hmm. right I, I think it's tiring though like i think in a sense like we're tired of having this discussion period mm -hmm. you know, that's not that's why like I, like you said, I'm one of the people who was like, well, I personally wouldn't do it. But, <laughs> but, no, but in, a, in a lot of generation, I'm not going to lie. You yeah. know, but I have that but at the, you know, in the middle of that sentence is because I do hope for that generation underneath us that they are in a different situation where they really mm -hmm. can't walk through the door and say, I don't have to depend on what my older generation had to assimilate to 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 have mm -hmm. it right like, i'm hoping that's what some of them are thinking i know that's not what they're all thinking <laughs> <laughs> i mean come on but I it was nice really, that we really could just do what the hell we want to do and i think that was the thing that once i kept reading the argument is what started to kind of get in the back of my mind like why are we even discussing this why do we still have to worry about what somebody's going to think before we walk out the door only because other people aren't doing it but I do get what you're saying that this is a this is an in-house conversation, you know, but I feel like the in-house conversation really has started because of the standards that was put on us when we were brought here. And that's the part that I do think is unfair, you know. So that's why I feel like a lot of us do have the right to say, well, I wouldn't do it, but because of that reason, because we know why this argument is happening, because of a but see, that's um, what I'm saying. That butt part, we need to we need to say it. Just like Cynthia, I I appreciate the fact that you when you just said it, you was like I'm. You said you were embarrassed, but you said it. I wish that everybody that said I wouldn't personally do it, but they needed to fill in that that missing piece because maybe that missing piece will get out there to the younger generations and say, you know what, they feel the same way we do, our parents and our grandparents, but. We still live in their world. Like they, they want to do what they want to do too. But they have to go to job, go to jobs where, that are run by white folk or live in this world so that they can provide for us. Well, right now I'm in this college or I'm in this trying to get a job in this in this society that's gonna still be run by white folk. Unfortunately, so I get, I understand what Monique is saying. Well, I understand what my mama is saying. It's not that she's saying it's wrong. She thinks that this head bonnet is fine, actually. But can I move to the next level in my career or in my life without it? So my goal now is to figure out how to move to the next level and wear it. 
and wear whatever I want to do without having to get approval from anybody. We need to tell them about assimilation and the butt. We, that's my thing. Quit, quit, mm-hmm. quit throwing it under the rug. Tell them, y'all, y'all gotta assimilate or, or not. Like, or, or go find you a way. Chart your own, your own path. That's that's all I'm saying. Um, I was gonna say, like, you know, given I'm younger than y'all, so kind of different generation and stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, I met like. I realize where I assimilate, right? But like, I kind of, I kind of like throw little jabs and fight it, kind of like with my bonnet girls, <laughs> That's right? All right. <laughs> and how I do that, right? So over the pandemic, right, we were at home on Zooms. All of a sudden, the world continues, and I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you guys are coming into my space, right? I like if I was going into work, then I would have to do all this extra stuff. But no, 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 you're here in my space, right? right? So right. on my Zoom calls. Some days they would see my afro. Some -hmm. days they would see my headscarf. Some days they would see braids. Some days they would see a wig, right? (laughs) And like I, and I'm not, yeah, I assimilate where I assimilate and things like that. But like, I'm also, I also think I'm in the position like, no, you need to get comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. Mm Because I know like the girls who aren't working these jobs that I'm working, right? We don't want to live like this. And I know like for sure, I enjoy seeing the bonnets out there because like they're kind of rewriting the rules, right? And making it more acceptable, right? So like in the position that I'm in, I'm like, yeah, this is what my natural hair looks like when it's super curly, when there's no... Super curly when there's no products in it. Today I have braids. Today I just don't want you to see my hair and here's my scarf. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there because like it's a spectrum, right? We're like all moving in different ways. Um, mm-hmm. And for those who throw little jabs out like that, those count too because you're making those people understand like she's still a dependable worker. She still does all the things that she, she's still contributing in the ways that she do. Um, and she just loves to change her hair. Imagine like when I worked in the workforce, I was the only black person in my department and (laughs) the unapologetic my hair. Like, and the thing is, it would change almost every week. And they were Mm -hmm. like really confused all the time. (laughs) They were confused. (laughs) You know, one time I remember I blew out my hair and like this white girl's in the bathroom. She's like, I didn't want to ask you all week. You know, that's your real hair. And I'm like, you know, yeah, it is. You know, and that (laughs) time. Because like I said, I was changing my hair all the time only because like you, I, that was a situation where I was kind of annoyed being the minority at this company. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, I really don't give a goddamn about assimilating to these (laughs) people. And (laughs) I was like, I can't do it. You know, so I literally, I wore braids, crochets, Mm. natural I dyed my hair blonde once that really killed them at that point because <laughs> I was like oh, they didn't know black women could wear blonde hair I mean I you name it I wore it but I also knew my stuff but mind y'all also I have an ethnic name because that's another episode we could have I had that mm. you know, I felt like I, I gotta be unapologetically black because they're already judging me anyway you know, and I think they were really confused because it's like, wait, she has this ethnic name. She's from New Orleans, when she, which she said about a thousand times. So I always had a thing where I was throwing that I was from New Orleans because people tend to misjudge that state too. I made a point mm-hmm. to say, you know, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, she's articulate because, you know, we're not supposed to be articulate. Right, right. not at all. It was, <laughs> it was just confusing. But I really was at the point where I just, I just felt drained trying to assimilate and I mm-hmm. still assimilate even with my different hairstyles because like another black woman I remember that worked in the same at one point it was two of us but she ended up leaving but I remember one time she was like when they reference a movie or a song or something you notice we both know what they're talking about but let us bring up something they don't know what the hell we're talking Ooh, about yes <laughs> Relation is so stressful. Like I said, that could be our third topic. We already got number two locked down. That could be episode <laughs> number three for us because I mean it's draining. So that's why I'm like, I wouldn't wear it, but 
I kind of, you know, if, if, if y'all young people can wear it and get away with it, hats off to you, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and, you know, you and I get of it even with natural hair. I, you know, I'm 44 years old and I still, there's some black people that really don't like this, you know, so that's why there's yeah, there different <laughs> stimulation too, because there's also our in house discussion mm-hmm. where we don't like certain things either we're like oh no she needs to put some perm in that head you know mm-hmm. like oh uh-huh. you know <laughs> so it's like it's so many different levels of assimilation and like I said my thing is just us from the neck up we can't we we gonna have some there's gonna be a group of somebody that's not gonna like how you wearing your hair period you know? it's, it's interesting mm-hmm. because when we talk about hair I've heard personally older black women say women with natural hair i've heard older black women say they look like pickaninnies i'm just gonna throw it on out there yeah, um, they, 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 they look, look like doesn't like, they walk around with their head all nappy like i've heard this from but they also come from a generation where as i've heard someone say like, they all fresh off the plantation with that with their train of thought where mm-hmm. that is not acceptable so we still have a couple of generations out there that are going to frown, that are black people, that are going to frown upon the the natural hair and all of this, the the bonnets, the pajamas, because they're mm-hmm. still alive and well. And I, I thank God that you know we still got people in their nineties and eighties or what have you that are that are still here. But they, <laughs> I know when I go out with my mom who's seventy and she sees you know certain pajamas in Walmart walking around she has a fit Ugh, don't make no sense don't where they mama at she'll always say where where's her mama at why she don't why she don't got no pants where where's her mama at why she don't why she don't got no panties under that dress like I'm hearing well my mom still wears stockings so we we got all these generations that are clashing and I honestly don't believe anybody is wrong that's just how they grew up my mama's not wrong I'm not wrong the younger people are not wrong wrong they just everybody's just trying to figure out how to live in this world and be the best them that they can be as successful as however they whatever their their view of success is and whatever they got to do to get there is what they got to do it is what it is and it's not wrong because you straighten your hair for a job interview which honestly back in the day I used to if I had braids and Google called me I was snatching them braids out, clipping the ends and brushing my hair back and gelling it down into a bun in the back so that I can walk in and and get that job. That's just the world that I have become accustomed to. Now, did I want to take my braids out? No, but I felt like they wouldn't take me seriously if I walked in there with blonde and brown streaked braids in my head. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think in a sense, it's kind of still that way, depending on who's the hiring manager and what the culture of that company is it just I don't know when we're gonna get away from it <laughs> right it is and that's the bad weight of this whole thing you know when are we gonna get away from that you know I feel like in my personal t- I'm very grateful for the hiring manager that brought me in the company um and you know I know like you know it's a big gap but I'm still in that position where like I am the only black girl, you know what I'm saying? And it's like mind blowing to me because like five, six years ago, I was the only black girl in my college class and like in the wow. workforce in these spaces, I'm still the only black girl. Um, so counting for two demographics. Honey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations though on, on getting there. I mean, that I'm sure that took a lot of work and that that is, you should be praised for at least getting there yourself so that you can bring others in. So congratulations. Yeah, and, I, and I have, I brought other people in because I, I, I mean, no one else was doing it for a whole year. And I was like, y'all can't, I can't be the only black one. That's right. I, I'm my own <laughs> self. I need someone else to side eye with me. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it, it is about that, the, the culture and who, who they put in position to hire, right? Because if it wasn't for that first hiring manager at that company who brought me in, they still wouldn't have, you know, they're they're one black girl for that demographic um and different perspectives and like now like I get to bring someone else in and so 
If that's important. Awesome. It starts from the top and then it trickles it down. Yeah. We, yeah, we got to get to the top. <laughs> so the, we got to so, get to the top. So I really, really, really love this conversation. I feel like <laughs> whenever I do topics like this, like it begats other topics. I think we probably sparked at least five different topics that yeah. we talk about on other episodes just with this. But before we do everything, I want to go around and let everyone just sum up their thoughts with it. And before and after you sum up everything, please tell everybody how they can find you, promote your whatever product you have out now. I know you guys are books, book writers, authors, you know, promote whatever <laughs> product or project you may have out now, too. But just sum up your thoughts on it and tell everybody how they can find you. I'll start with China first. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Again, I am China the Writer, and as my name says, I am a writer. I have nine books out, but I'm not going to name all of those. I'm going to name the the first book, and it's called Tangled in a Lover's Web. It's, it's an amazing story of my hometown and some things that have gone down in the racist city of Memphis, Tennessee. So um, please pick it up. You can pick it up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, walmart.com. It's a great book. Um, as far as this, this particular subject, I just want to sum it up with pretty much what I just said. Um, do whatever you have to do to get to where you want to get in life. And if you must be aware of your appearance at all times, then no one's going to shame you for it. No one's going to shame you because you wear a relaxer. No one's going to shame you for doing the things that you got to do to achieve the level of success that you have to achieve. Now, if you can get around that and you don't desire all of those things and you can go out dressed the way that you feel comfortable, then by all means do it and no, don't feel embarrassed or ashamed of it. Just don't ask nobody for something that uh, that may require you to be a certain way. Because guess what? You're at their mercy. If you want it bad enough, you're going to have to do it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, Cynthia. Thank you, China. <laughs> uh, that was very beautiful. Um, yeah, my name is Cynthia D. Hilaire. I'm an actress and a writer. Um, my most recent project is called A Sit Down with Sin, Monologues for Black Girls. Um, so monologues created um, for Black girls of Generation Z talking about topics that pertain to us. And it also comes with a short film. Um, oh. You can find me. Yeah, yeah, it comes with a short film that I produce myself. Um, you can find me on all social media um, at Sin, C-Y-N, Hilaire. H-I-L-A-I-R-E. Um, but yeah, and if you want to check out the book, it's on Amazon. It's on my website, CynthiaDHilaire.com. Um, and in summary about this topic, I mean, there were so many good points. Um, I don't think anyone is right. I don't think anyone is wrong, right? We're all on this spectrum. And, you know, China, you brought up a very valid point, especially with the comparison with um, Jen and Gents. And it's like, what do you have to do to be at that position? So you're at top where it don't really matter how you look or what you're wearing. Um, and I'm so grateful that we are starting to have people in those positions, right? right. When you, right. I think of Issa Rae and how she wears mm. her hair and she presents yes. herself and how that opens doors for other people to feel natural in the industry. Um, and, you know, Jay-Z and how, like, he's having his whole thing going on. <laughs> Kudos to him because he's the right. big rock. Right, um, right. So I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's something we all need to consider. And if you... And if, you know, for my girls wearing the bonnets down there, I'm here for you. Just know I'm in these rooms wearing my scarf when I want to jab at them or my natural hair when I'm like, this is what y'all going to get today. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. I just want to round up by saying first, if Monique ever sees this, I do want to thank her, though, for being that auntie, whether some of you guys yeah. agree with me, I feel like our generation can use that auntie, honestly, because I yeah. feel like we should never be so big and so arrogant where we can't have that that auntie, that grandma, mama, you know, pull us aside and be like, baby, whether you agree with it or not, I, mm -hmm. I thank her for taking that auntie role, whether people, you know, agree with it or not, because I feel like whether you agreed or disagree with her, she got kind of roasted for it. I just, it was a bit much. They, they wanted you know, to counsel her. <laughs> right. We should be able to just have conversations whether you 
agree with it or not and just be respectful. So that's one thing I will say. My take on it is just make sure you respect yourself. And I think that was the message. You know, I could be wrong, but I feel like that at the end of the day was the message she was trying to convey. Have respect for yourself, how you choose to present yourself. Make sure you do it in a respectful way. If you're cool with walking out a particular way, hey, but just have some respect for yourself and have reverence for yourself. You know, and I think one of the things she wanted to let people know is you're worth everything. So appearance does matter so just be comfortable with how you present yourself let's put it that way and that can go on so many different subjects whether you are natural whether you're choosing to wear that bonnet because you're on a plane for that protective style whether you're saying hey I want to wear braids to this interview and not feel judged because hey I have a PhD I mean I look beyond that that invisible crown sometimes you know, let's just present ourselves to just show people who we really are, because there's going to be a group of people that's going to judge you no matter what, you know, no matter what that appearance is. Sometimes they're not, they're just looking at, they are just looking at the outer, so they may not realize this young guy in the do-rag or this young woman with that bonnet, she may have a master, she may be smarter than you, you never know. So at the end right. of the day, like I'm one of my favorite scenes in Black Panther, and I've watched that movie a billion times, and it was one <laughs> that I never picked up on until I saw it like maybe 40, 50 times when T. Child is on the mountain and he's fighting and Angela Bassett, the mother, you know, he's getting a little beaten, but she screams over to him, show them who you are. Right. So mm -hmm. is, regardless of what the hell is on your head, show them who you are because we do live, live in a world where we have to deal with assimilation. We have to deal with colorism. We have to deal with featureism. We have to deal with freaking rhythms regarding our hair. <laughs> Just show them who you are, no matter what the hell is on top of your head. So thank you guys for having this wonderful conversation. Glad to be here. Always I loved glad. It, loved it, loved it. So people who have on the Q chat, I have been doing the Q&A format with the guests, but I do want to take it back home, guys, to the original format. Like, I'll still have some guests here and there, but I want to just take it back home to what we talk about pertinent topics related to Black women, the Q chat. So guys, please go to www.thekeychat.com to access this episode and past episodes and make sure whether you're wearing that bonnet, do-rag, natural braids to go love yourself. Thank you.